Okay, we're back. This is all traced and ready to go. Underneath it is my um, original drawing. So I'm going to take that off. Notice I did not do the words. So this drawing I'd like you to glue in your altered book. You did a nice job. It's a great reference. Don't just pitch it. I hate to see people throw their artwork away. So that gets put to the side. It also is a cue for color choices that you thought would work or you know won't work because of what you colored. All right. So from there, you're going to need a piece of newspaper. You're going to be doing this on a flat surface. I'm doing it this way so you can see what I'm doing. You need your picture. On the newspaper with permanent marker, please put your name and your period number. Okay. That way, while your quilt is drying on the um, drying rack, I know whose it is. Now, it's going to sound a little weird. This is cloth. I would like you to wet the entire thing before you get started. So I'm putting it in water. I just happen to have water ready to go. I'm squeezing it out. Now we use permanent marker so it's not going to make a difference to your pencil, to your lines. Okay? From there, I'm going to hook it back on top of the newspaper. And get, did I do it upside down? Actually, it doesn't really matter, honestly. Yeah, I did. There's no words, so it won't matter. And I'm going to hook it here so you can see what I'm doing. All right, now we're going to paint. I like to use these little, um, they're called Dr. F.H. Martin's Bombay India ink. Okay. You can use acrylics. You can use any kind of paint. But because this is ink, it doesn't fill the fabric fibers thick. So that eventually when you're stitching, you can still get the needle through without getting frustrated. But I have used um, I have used acrylic paints, real inexpensive ones, watered way down. Now to use these, you're going to get a lid, just an old plastic lid. Put one tiny drop of the ink on the tray. All right, so let's do the frog. I've wet my paintbrush, and just by putting my brush in the ink, it's already got tons of green. So the frog's going to get painted green. And you'll see when I paint, sometimes the ink goes out of the lines. That's totally fine. In fact, it makes for a more interesting picture. Some of the ink is going into the shark. And again, that's okay. All right, so I might put a little tiny bit of yellow. Just dotting it on there. There's my frog, and the green is going into the shark. I'm going to do the red of the car side mirror. It's a red car. And again, the, the cloth is wet. It might bleed out, and that's okay. Um, I think I have purple. Maybe I do with me. Yep, hang on. I'm going to make my shark purple because I can. I'm going to put one dot of purple on my little. Maybe I am. Looks like my purple is pretty dry. Wait a minute. I'm going to add some water to the ink and go that way. These are getting kind of old, but I've had them for years, and once you buy them, they last forever. All right, and since we're watering the paint, the ink down anyway, screw it. All right, so I'm going to clean my brush out, make sure it's full of water. Whew, got tons of purple from that. I'm going to do a stripe of purple on my shark across the top. What I noticed when I was looking at shark images is most sharks are dark on the top, and light on the belly. So that's how I'm painting it. And I like the idea of using purple versus black. I don't like to paint with black because it tends to deaden the color around it. I'm going to use some blue, again, because I can, because I'm the artist, to fill the side view reflection. I would like everyone to please paint the entire cloth 
at least with a light color, need some more blue, just a moment. Okay, a light application of watered down ink. Now normally, what was I doing, blue? Um, you'll get told a lot of times to fill the space. I do want you to, to deal with all the space, but um, I don't want you to do it dark. Okay, so I don't have blackout, so I'm going to mix some colors and put that down here and up here. And then last, but oops, I keep going the wrong way for the water. And I'm going to put some yellow up in here with a little bit of green and a little yellow and some of that mixed color down here and over here. All right, so I'm totally painted. I'm not painting the shark's belly. Just not doing it. I know the instructions were to paint the whole thing, but it's basically all painted. And if there's a reason, talk to me and we go from there. Um, from this point on, I don't need any more. If you put your finger on here, it should be very, very wet. You can see my newspaper's wet. It's soaked. And the color's not dark. Now, here's why. You're going to take this off your table and off, leave it on the newspaper, put it on the drying rack. You'll know it's yours because your name, remember I asked you to put your name on the newspaper. So when I empty the drying rack, I know whose it is and where to put it. Okay. Here's why you want that to be very, very washed out. You are going to stitch your quilts. All right. So that they're totally stitched. This is a student example. If you try to put a needle through it when it's painted and the paint's thick, you can't get the needle through without getting frustrated. You'll see that it gets intensified in color with the application of the stitching. That's later down the line. Here's another example where the student did a beautiful job, lovely job of or applying the paint in a nice washed out way. She never did finish stitching it, but that's okay. She did a beautiful job on painting it. Um, here's another one where it's a nice light application of color okay with the paint and it shouldn't be stiff these aren't stiff yay and then you also have this one this one was finished it's hard to see but there's a very nice light application of color in the background and she got to the final stages where she was adding the bling with the beads and the buttons and everything so we're nowhere near there but we will be eventually. So hopefully, once it's dry, I'll show you how to assemble it, and we call that a sandwich. <laughs> There's a bottom, a middle, and a top. And that's our next instruction thing. See you then.